presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Cary Grant and Claudette Colbert in The Awful Truth with Phyllis Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. With a feeling of gaiety and excitement along Hollywood Boulevard tonight, lights are ablaze and crowds are gathering in front of our theater. All the visible signs of a Hollywood opening are here to welcome the Lux Radio Theater back to the air after our summer vacation. But there's another scene that interests us more than the bright lights on Hollywood Boulevard. A scene repeated some millions of times throughout the country. It's the scene in your living room, where you and your family once more occupy the reserved seats, which are yours tonight and every Monday night. You are the ones who've made this theater possible by your purchases of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. We owe you an obligation to make this new year in the Lux Radio Theater the most entertaining in our history. And tonight we pay you the first installment on this obligation by presenting The Awful Truth, starring Claudette Colbert and Cary Grant. Which reminds me that we still owe an obligation to Miss Colbert. Whenever she's done a comedy for us in the past, Claudette has always said that next time she'd like to do a serious drama. And we've solemnly promised that she could. And we'd keep that promise if she'd give us the chance. But we're continually finding comedies that she insists on doing. And I'm not a man with either the courage or the inclination to refuse Claudette anything. At lunch not long ago, we talked about plans for the opening coming for the coming season in the Lux Radio Theater. The moment I mentioned the awful truth, I noticed a hungry gleam in Claudette's eyes. But quickly explained, of course, that wouldn't interest you. It's a comedy. I was wrong again. Before we came to dessert, Claudette was asking for the script. The memorable performance of Cary Grant as Jerry in the film produced by Columbia Pictures Corporation, instantly suggested him for the same role in our radio adaptation, but he was easier to cast than to find. In fact, Cary Grant is probably one of the hardest men in Hollywood to find. Our intelligence service, however, tracked him to the beach, where he'd gone swimming with Phyllis Brooks. That gave us another idea, and we signed them both right there, dripping wet. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the very pleasant truth is that we're ready to give you the awful truth as we raise the curtain on a new season in the Lux Radio Theater and act one of our plays, starring Cary Grant as Jerry and Claudette Colbert as Lucy, with Phyllis Brooks as Barbara. <laughs> the sun lamp room of a midtown Manhattan athletic club. Hank, the attendant, is piling towels on a shelf as a young man in gym trunks makes a hurried entrance. He's Jerry Warner. A tall young man, well-built and healthy. But just now, there's a sharp contrast between his decided pallor and the two dark, magnificent circles under his eyes. With a quick movement, he bounces up on the table and stretches out luxuriously. All right, Hank, my man, turn on that sun lamp, give her all she's got. Well, about 15 minutes on each side is all I'd recommend, Mr. Oh, Warner. Oh, no, 15 minutes, nothing. I've got to get a deep Florida tan if it takes all afternoon. Give it the juice. Well, okay. a boy. All aboard from Miami, Palm Beach, and Point South. Hi, Jerry. Oh, hello, Frank. I uh, heard you were in here. Thought maybe you'd like to play a little squash. Sorry, Frank, no time. Say, you're awfully white-skinned for a guy who just spent two weeks in Florida. You no, know, that's just what I thought. Uh, what mm -hmm. did you do down there? Carry a parasol? Or uh, didn't you go? Ah, uh, 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 don't let any idea like that get around. Uh-huh, I get it. Pulling a fast one on the little wife, eh? Oh, now look, Frank, I'm surprised at you. I'm supposed to have been in Florida. Now, suppose one of Lucy's friends says... Why, isn't he tanned? Well, Lucy's going to be embarrassed. Well, I'm going to be tanned. Lucy's not going to be embarrassed. <laughs> and what wives don't know won't hurt them. What was it? A poker trip? Sure, a fellow's got to bust out once in a while. Assert his independence. Boy, did I assert it. Yeah, you certainly look it. But I'll bet you wouldn't like Lucy to pull a stunt like that on you. Why not? After all, a person doesn't have to stop being an individual just because she gets married. Oh, uh, maybe. Anyhow, how about coming over to my house for breakfast? We were all out late last night, and some of the gang are stopping by. I got a better idea. Everybody come to my place. Lucy will fix up breakfast for us, and maybe later we can sneak away and play some golf. What do you say? I'm convinced. I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, ladies and gents, come on in. The joint is yours. Jerry, that's sunburn. You're positively for a minute. Yeah. Wait till Lucy sees what Florida <laughs> did for you. Yeah, where is she? Hey, Lucy, Lucy, surprise. <laughs> well, well, hello, old dog of mine. How you been? Hey, where's Mama? Where is she? <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Warner. Oh, hello, Celeste. Will you tell Mrs. Warner I'm here? I'm sorry, sir. Mrs. Warner's not at home. Not home? Where'd she go? I don't know, sir. Oh, well, uh, uh, when did she leave? I'm not sure, sir. I think last night. You mean she hasn't been... She... <laughs> oh, well, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, what's the matter, Jerry? No welcoming arms to greet you this trip? Now mind your own business, will you? Come to think of it, she probably ran up to her Aunt Patsy's cabin in the mountains. She always does it. She gets lonely. Suppose her Aunt Patsy wasn't home? Oh, I get it. I'm up to my neck in funny people, huh? <laughs> No, no, seriously, I wish Lucy would go out and get some fun for herself now and then. Do her good. That's the trouble with marriage. People are always imagining things, and the next thing you know, they end up in a divorce court. Ah, the broad-minded man from Miami. Yeah, yeah. well, if you think you're going to get a chance to prove my broad-mindedness, you're crazy. She's up at Aunt Patsy's cabin, and I'll bet on it. Saying, is that a spot, Frank? Why the fish just... Up at Aunt Patsy's cabin, eh? Well, there's Patsy now. <laughs> Some fun, oh, eh? shut up. Hey, turn that radio off, will you? Okay. Well, uh, hello, Patsy. How did you get here? By invitation. Lucy invited me yesterday on the phone. Say, what is this? Lucy invites me, no Lucy. Where is she? I don't know. I... I... Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Hello, Jerry, darling. Oh, darling. Gee, it's good to see you. Oh, it's grand. You're looking marvelous, Jerry. Yeah? Oh, oh. I nearly forgot Alma. Alma, come on in and meet everybody. Alma's the best music teacher a woman ever had, aren't you, Alma? Thank you, my dear. You know Alma Olivar, Jerry, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. How are you? How do you do? Everybody else, this is Alma. Oh. How do you do? How do you do? How are you? Oh, well, now that we're all introduced, I can relax. Oh, <laughs> Alma and I have had the most terrible time. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, well, I imagine you must have. Where was the recital? Oh, now, silly, what do you mean? Well, I didn't know they had recitals in the morning and the people went to them in evening clothes. That's <laughs> formal, isn't it? <laughs> well, Alma does look silly and Dale's at this time of the day, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was such an awful time. Oh, why? Somebody sing off pitch? Oh, now, <laughs> stop it, darling. You don't know what happened. Alma's car broke down a million miles from nowhere. He had to park me at a farmhouse and hike to the nearest town to get them to tow the car. And then he had to stay there, hang around garages and things to pick me up in the morning and bring me home. Oh, it, that's it, it was dreadful. We were coming home from a party. You were the loveliest human being there. Oh, thank you, Alma. You say the nicest thing. <laughs> well, Jerry, uh, you understand, don't you? Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Warner, you have the continental mind. <laughs> oh, sure, that's it. <laughs> I've got a continental mind now. <laughs> Lucy, dear, so sorry, but I have to run. That horrible dressmaker of mine. Oh, of course, darling. Well, I have a little too, Lucy. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. What's your idea? The party hasn't even started yet. Oh, sure, sure. We know, but uh, you probably want to talk to Lucy. Oh, come on, people. I'll give you all a hint. Okay, Frank, we'll be here. Goodbye, Jerry. Bye. Oh. Well, Mr. Louvel, why didn't you let Frank give you a hitch? <laughs> I wanted to explain... You see, Mr. Warner, the next time I take your wife out, I hope... That, I hope uh, you buy a new car, or else I'll loan you mine. Are you hungry? Huh? Oh, thanks. Well, yes, I, I am. Now, why don't you run out and get a bite? <laughs> Big, strong fellow like you should take care of himself, sitting in drafty garages all night. Uh, uh, Mr. Warner, what have I done? That's what I'm going to find out. Oh, now, Jerry. Uh, we'll discuss this in private, please. That is, if Mr. Louvel can remember where we keep our door... Very well. Perhaps it's best as well, Lucy. Will I see you soon? Well, of course, Alma. Oh, it's all been so perfect, Lucy. Thank you for everything. And, Mr. Warner, I think you must be out of your continental mind. <laughs> well, you know, that was pretty funny at that. I mean, what he just said. Oh, very funny. Brush me <laughs> off, will you? <laughs> well, he's gone. You can speak freely, darling. Well, Lucy, what have you got to say for, for yourself? yourself. <clears throat> oh, that's so smart. <laughs> well, I knew you'd say that, and I'm prepared to answer. Alma was invited to the party by a young man whose sister is a pupil of Alma. Alma invited me to go along. I went because I could think of nothing better to do. Believe it or not, I was lonely. Yes, and then the car broke down. Yes, and then I stayed at the farmhouse. I slept badly because of insufficient blankets. Uh, twice during the night, I, I coughed. Now, let me see. Was there anything else? Now, look, Lucy. This situation isn't amusing, although you seem to think it is. If you had sense enough to see it, you'd know that our marriage is teetering on the edge of a cliff. Well, you're trying to be funny. But perhaps marriage doesn't mean anything to you. 
Perhaps you've no sentiment there for me. <laughs> Look at this on the table, a letter I wrote you from Florida, and you didn't even open it. Mm, it's enough to destroy one's faith, isn't it? Oh, I haven't any faith left in anyone. Not even in that conscientious soul at Miami Beach who followed your directions so nicely and mailed me a letter every day? Huh? What on earth are you talking about? Oh, darling. <laughs> you look so cute and pleased with your little athletic club sunburst. <laughs> Rather like a small boy who's just had his curls cut off. Well, I don't like to be unpleasant, Jerry, but you are not in Florida. Now, don't change the subject. You weren't in Florida and you weren't in Montreal that time you said you were going there. Once you, you even had the letters mailed from the wrong place. Huh? Huh? The dear Lucy... Charleston is such a quaint city. And the quaint thing about Charleston is Charleston's postmark is Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Nice trick your friend played on you. Now, now, wait a minute. Don't try to justify your behavior by insinuating things about me. What? But I haven't any behavior to justify. I, I've just been unlucky, that's all. You came home and caught me in, in the truth. And it seems there's nothing less logical than the truth. Oh, 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 oh. a philosopher, huh? You don't believe me? How can I believe you? Oh, listen, Jerry. Now, don't you see that there, there can't be any doubt in marriage? The whole thing is built on faith, and if you've lost that, you've lost everything. Yes, I suppose when that's gone, the marriage is washed up, isn't it? Do you mean that? Sure. Well, I guess that settles it. I guess it does. And let me tell you something. Well, let me tell you something. I wouldn't go on living with you if, if you were dipped in platinum. So go on. Oh, go on. Divorce me. It'll be a pleasure. Divorce you? Are you crazy? Do you think I want people to think you prefer that that, that music lover to me? Oh. Well, well, then I'll divorce you. It's customary anyway. I, I think it has something to do with the, the husband being a gentleman. Never mind the gentleman stuff. Just get going on it. Go on. I, I'll call the lawyer right now. By the way, what's the most convenient day for you to be divorced? And in the case of Warner versus Warner, the court grants an interlocutory decree of divorce to the plaintiff, Lucy Warner. The divorce, if not further contested, will become final in 90 days from this date. That will be all. One moment, Your Honor. There's one matter still unsettled. According to my client, Mr. Warner, it's a matter of, uh... Uh, uh, Mr. Smith! Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Smith. And who is Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith is, uh, he's their dog. No, no, Mr. Smith is my dog. He's mine. Uh, silence. But Mr. Smith belongs to me, and she's got him. I told you to keep quiet. But... Oh, but... ignore him, Your Honor. I told you he was impossible to get along with. Oh, well, let's hear it. The animal at present is in Mrs. Warner's possession. Mr. Warner wishes to have him because... Because he's mine! He is not! Yes, so! He is not! Yes, so. Silence! Silence! Is not. This seems to be a custody case. And in custody cases, we frequently permit the final decision to rest with the, uh, the dog. Ah, ah, well, now we're getting somewhere. Now let Mr. Smith decide whom he wants to live Silence, with. Silence, please. Oh, bailiff, have the dog brought in. The custody of the dog will depend on his own desires. And let me warn you, neither of you must use any false means of influencing the animal's decision. Unfasten the dog, please. Now... You may each call the dog. Come on, 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 What's Mr. Smith doing with that rubber bone in his mouth? Well, it always was his favorite bone. Where did he get it? How would I know? Oh, you. <laughs> You'd stoop to anything. You hid that bone under your handbag and Mr. Smith smelled it. You're not going to get him away from me like that. Get him? <laughs> I've got him, darling. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Why, Aunt Patsy? Is it doing anything besides falling? I don't think so. Nothing unusual ever happens around here. If I'd known we were going to be buried side by side, I'd never have considered to take an apartment with you. Yes, but I needed you, Aunt Patsy. You know the period of readjustment that comes in the wake of a divorce. Readjustment? My foot. Just another word for moping around. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, why, you know dozens of men who turn handsprings as a chance to take you out. But no, you'd rather sit around and readjust yourself. No, you're just an old grouch, that's all. Yeah? Well, this is one old grouch who wants to go somewhere where there's life. And I don't mean plant life. Well, 
We can't go out without escorts, so that's that. Well, I don't need an escort to go down to the lobby. I'm going down to the newsstand and see Joe. He may be funny looking, but he's a man, and maybe he knocks off early. Oh, Aunt Patsy, you wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't, eh? You're talking to a desperate woman. Hey, Mr. Wainwright. Well, I guess I've read pretty nearly everything here, Joe. Too bad, ma'am. Mm, isn't it? I'm so bored. <laughs> Too bad they stopped printing zippy stories. Yes, ma'am. That's what my wife says. Oh, she does. I see. Oh, Pardon me, but did that copy come in of the Tulsa, Oklahoma bugle? Sorry, Mr. Leeson. I guess maybe there's something wrong with the mail. Oh, oh. The boy well, that's too bad. Looks like I won't find out how we did at the Rodale. Oh, <laughs> how do, ma'am? Oh, <laughs> how do you do? I hope you don't think I'm fresh. My name's Dan Leeson, room 1214. Morn, I see you coming in and going out sometimes. Oh, <laughs> we've noticed you, too. You did? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> say... Who is that beautiful girl who's with you sometimes? Um, she has a dog, and, uh, well, she's beautiful. Oh, that's my niece, Lucy. She's just a little homebody. No. Mm-hmm. Say, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Why, of course hey, I would, Mr. Mr. Leeson. What is it? Well, you see, I'm a stranger in town, and I thought that perhaps I'd better find those things down there. Yes, here we are. Go right in, Mr. Leeson. Oh, thanks. You know, I think it's just wonderful that we met this way. Oh, Lucy, Lucy, may I present Mr. Leeson? Mr. Mr. Leeson, this is my niece you were so anxious to meet. Her name is Lucy Warner. How do you do? Oh, how do you do, ma'am? Uh, Mr. Lucy, uh, Mr. Leeson's from Oklahoma, Lucy, and he'd take it as being right neighborly of us if we'd show him some of the bright spots. Well, it's raining rather hard. And Mr. Leeson lives right across the hall with his mother. Isn't that what you said, with your mother? Yep, with Ma. Mm-hmm. We're here on a visit. I'm in oil, you know. Oh, marinated, so to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's a good one. I must remember to tell that to Ma. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she'd adore that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, tell us all about Oklahoma, Mr. Leeson. Well, we all think Oklahoma, well, it's... Pretty darn swell. Oh, there's the door. I'll oh. get it. <laughs> yes, Mr. Leeson? Well, like I was saying, ma'am, Oklahoma <laughs> is pretty darn... Oh, <laughs> right, uh, oh, dear. Well, how's the old girl? Well, I never better. Won't you, won't you come in? <laughs> I fully intend to. Well, uh, hello, Lucy. Hello. What do you want? Well, now, read this little legal document. I guess that'll explain better than I could. What? What is this? It's a writ. That's what it is. A writ. The court just ruled that I'm permitted to see Mr. Smith for two hours a week. I am permitted to take Mr. Smith walking, riding, motorplay, no, motorboating, or aquaplaning. No, not aquaplaning. That's too dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the order reads that I can visit with him and entertain him in any form or manner that does not endanger life or limb. And that would rule out aquaplaning. <laughs> I suppose you've come to take him bicycling. What, in this weather, are you crazy while he catches death of cold? No, I've come to entertain him in any form or manner. Hey, Smitty, where are you? I'll get him. Oh, uh, Miss Warner, perhaps oh, I'm... I'm, heard... I'm sorry, Mr. Leeson. Uh, this is my husband. Oh, uh, I mean, oh. Well, uh, he's only my husband for... How much longer is it? Oh, 60 days. No, 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 59. <laughs> well, how are you, Mr. Leeson? Howdy. I'm glad to know you. Uh, excuse me, what do you say? I said I'm glad to know you. Oh, I... How can you be glad to know me? I know how I'd feel if I was sitting with a girl and her husband walked in. <laughs> mm. uh, I'll bet you do. What's that supposed to mean, huh? Nothing, nothing. Uh, Why don't you go and play with the dog? Sure, where is he? Hey, Mr. Smith! Where are you, fella? Oh, gee, oh, what's his book? Gee, old fella, it's good to see you. Look what I brought you. You're all out of scrap. Come on, uh, let's have a tuck around. You, uh, you were telling us about Oklahoma, Mr. Leeson. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, boy. Well, I'm really a man of many interests out there, Mrs. Warner. Oil is my main business, of course, and I, I can't complain about that. It's treated me fine. And I have a big ranch that's more of a hobby than anything. Oh, the lamp, Jerry, you broke the lamp. Oh, nothing. I'll get you new one. Oh, don't bother. It's only in the limb point. Like I was saying, Mrs. Warner, this ranch is just outside of Tulsa. I have just about everything. Oh, good heavens. Jerry, do you have to play that game? Do you know any other one? Yes. Get his rubber bone for him. He loves that bone. Oh, yes, I remember. Where is it? In the closet, right there. Huh? In here? That's right. Well, I can't find it. Oh, but just keep looking. Hey, hey, what is this? Don't lock the door on me. Aunt Patsy, what are you doing? Hey! Lucy, dear, why don't you run along with Mr. Leeson? 
Clancy, Clancy, let me out of here. I'm locked in. Say, is anything wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> That's just a game Mr. Waternup has with the dog. Oh, oh. oh. Mr. Waternup, I want to get out of here. Oh, Lord. Well, come on, Mr. Leeson. Let's go. Huh? Oh, oh, swear. Good night, Aunt Patsy. I hope you know what you're doing. Good night, dear. Night. Night. Ooh, I'll break the door down if you don't let me out of here. Oh, just oh, oh. a minute, just a minute. Come on out, Jerry. Oh, trained, that's what I am, trained. Huh. You're trying to cook up something between my wife and that Buffalo Bill, aren't you? Your wife? She's still my wife for 60 days. 59. All right, 59, but she's still my wife, do you understand? And what are you going to do about it? You'll find out what I'm going to do. Stick around and watch. I've got some rights around here. To entertain Mr. Smith in any form or manner. Oh, shut up. <laughs> While we are waiting for Jerry to make good on those threats, we take a brief intermission from our play to hear from Mr. Ruick. Ladies and gentlemen, in our intermission before Act Two of The Awful Truth, starring Claudette Colbert, Terry Grant, with Phyllis Brooks, we bring you a musical interlude. Three charming young ladies will sing a song suggesting something about our product, Lux Toilet Soap. Well, Sally, what is your song going to be? Sweet Sue, Mr. Ruick. Shall we sing it? Yes, please. Every star above knows the one I love. Sweet Sue, just you. And the moon on high knows the reason why it's you. No one but you, no one else it seems ever shares my dreams. Without you, dear, I don't know what I do. In this heart of mine, you live all the time. Sweet Sue, just you. Mmm, a sweet song. And you chose it because... Well, Mr. Ruick... Because we think one of the nicest things about Lux Toilet Soap is the way it leaves you feeling so sweet. So Sweet Sue reminds you of a Lux girl. Hmm, that's nice. And it's true that Lux Toilet Soap leaves you feeling sweet and dainty. That's why it's such a delightful bath soap. Really, a fragrant Lux Toilet Soap bath is the most refreshing experience you can have when you're tired and feeling sort of, well, uncharming. Its rich, creamy, active lather just floats away perspiration and dust and dirt, leaves you utterly dainty. And when you consider how little Lux toilet soap costs, only a few pennies, why every member of the family can share the luxury of this kind of bath. You know, it's because so many millions of cakes of Lux toilet soap are sold that it can cost so little. So everybody, fathers, mothers, youngsters, babies, can have its gentle care. Remember that it's gentle, it cleanses beautifully. It leaves you dainty and sweet and charming to other people, as you always want to be. Buy three cakes at a time so that Lux Toilet Soap will always be at hand. Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of The Awful Truth, starring Claudette Colbert as Lucy, Cary Grant as Jerry, with Phyllis Brooks as Barbara. <laughs> It's morning, a few weeks after Jerry's hectic visit. Across the breakfast table in their lonely apartment, Aunt Patsy is looking at her niece with an expression of growing horror. What did you say, Lucy? I said, of course I like Dan Leeson. Why shouldn't I? He's sweet and thoughtful. And you should be the last one to object. You introduced him to me. Only because he was a man who could take us out. I didn't expect you to get silly about him. Was it silly to like a man who's sane and considerate? I was married to one of those gay romantic types, and one's enough. Your toast is burning. Oh. Lucy, do you know what rebound is? That business of trying to get over one love affair by bouncing into love with somebody else? That is fine. Except the rebound is rarely the real thing. There's the first bounce, the second bounce. And, well, look at me. You wind up like an old tennis ball. <laughs> now, look, I, I tell you I'm serious about Dan Leeson. He's a fine person. I like him, I... I like him very much. I'm all through with Jerry. He, he doesn't mean a thing to me. I don't love him. What's more, I probably never did. I guess that surprises you, doesn't it? I hate Jerry Warner, and I like Dan Leeson very, very much. I can hardly wait to see him tonight. And I hope he's just mad about me, because I think he's the finest man I ever met. Lucy. I know, my toast is good. Honest to 
goodness, Mr. Warner. I think it's simply wonderful of you to come here just to hear me sing. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Mr. Warner, you're awful sweet and all that, but you always seem to have your mind on something else. Or maybe it's someone else. Am I right, Sugar Pie? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm in love with love, uh-huh. In the spring, a young man's fancy likely turns to what he's been thinking about all winter. <laughs> Say, uh, how long have you been talking like Amos and Andy? Oh, for a long time. <laughs> it helps me in my work. Well, shut my mouth. Who's that dull, just looking creature just coming in? Oh, where? Oh, my, my. Well, you've heard that gag that's flying around town. Who was that lady I saw you with? You mean that's no lady, that's your wife? Uh huh, that's my wife. I guess this is our table over here, Lucy. Sit down. Come on over and meet her. <laughs> well, well, well. Hello, folks. Oh, hello. Uh, uh, this is, uh, Miss Dixie Bell Lee. This is Mrs. Warriner, and this is Mr. Leeson, the gentleman Mrs. Warriner is going to marry. That's right. I'm mighty proud to meet you all. Uh, now, you're sure we're not intruding? Huh? Well, what do you mean? Well, wouldn't you like to buy us a drink? Oh, oh, why, why, yes, of course. Well, uh, sit down. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Ah, <sighs> well, my, 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 isn't this cozy, huh? <laughs> So, uh, so you two are going to be married, huh? Oh, I was glad when I heard that. Yes, I said to myself, that Leeson's just the man for Lucy. And then I said to myself... He's always talking to himself. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is a charming place, don't you think, Miss... Uh... Uh, Dixie Bell Lee. Oh. Do you like it, honey? I'm so glad, because I kind of feel like the place is mine. Oh, you, you come here often? Well, I work here. Didn't you all know that? No, no. Say, you're from the South, aren't you? Now, isn't he just the cleverest yet? How'd you all ever guess that, Mr. Man? Oh, well, I don't know. It was just a shot in the dark. Sure. <laughs> shot in the dark? Well, you see, Dixie Bell Lee isn't her real name. No? Oh, no, no. She changed it because her family objected to her going into show business. Isn't that right, Dixie? That's right. Well, I guess I'd better go now and get ready. Do you reckon you all can stay to see my act? Oh, of course we'll stay. Well, nothing could drag us away. Well, I'll see you later, honey child. I'll be here. Mm -hmm. She seems like a lovely girl. Ah, uh, she is, Lucy. But wait till she sings. A golden throat, that's what. I keep coming here all the time just to listen to her. How faithful of you. Does she really sing awful good? Well, no. I don't think her singing's up to Lucy's, no. Dixie has a sort of an elfin charm. A uh, je ne sais quoi, if you know what I mean. And I don't. Dan, dear. Don't. Uh, don't you think you ought to ask Jerry about it now? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. About what? About our mine, Jerry. What mine? Our mine. You know, our coal mine. It's our last tie, Jerry. And, well, I was telling Mr. Leeson how badly it was doing, and he thought maybe he could do better with it. That's right. I'd like to gamble on it, Mr. Warner. I'm pretty lucky. Do you know what they call me out west? <laughs> <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> Well, how about us having a conference at my apartment tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I present that great little artist, Miss Dixie Bell Lee. Here she comes, isn't she pretty? She sure is. The costume's a little short, isn't it? I mean, unless she does a tank act. Uh-uh. Shh, shh. Listen to this. Listen. I got an invitation from Mrs. Hutton. She Easy. said, I don't care for nothing, I'm trotting. Yeah. Sutton, Sutton. Is that what you mean by elfin charm? I might be right there to <laughs> Say, she'd go great in Oklahoma, well, wouldn't she? Come on, swing it, miss. Yippee! Dan, I, I don't feel well. Yippee! Why, well, what's the trouble, Lucy? Dan, I think you'd better take me home. But, Lucy, we can't walk out in the middle of Miss Lee singing. Oh, don't you like her, Lucy? Oh, I love her, yes. I can see now it was easy for her to change her name than for her whole family to change this. Come on, Dan. Well, all right, if you want, Lucy. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon at my apartment, Mr. Warner, about that mine. <laughs> I'll be there, big boy. All dressed up, don't care for nothing, I'm sorry. I want to hear all about these mine. Well, I've got all the records in history with me. Oh, by the way, Lucy, I searched all over for the for the report my call made before we bought it, but I couldn't find it. You must have it. Oh, well, perhaps I have. Well, uh, when you get a chance, take a look through your stocking drawer, will you? You know, Dan, she always hides important things in the top drawer of her dresser. She does? Oh, sure, sure. It's an old habit of hers. Every legal paper we ever had smelled a sachet. Hmm? 
Even our marriage certificate. Uh, about the mine, Jerry. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, the mine, uh-huh. Good afternoon. Oh, come on in, Ma. Come on oh, in. Oh, hello, Mrs. Newton. Good afternoon, Lucy. I guess you don't know this fella here, Ma. He's Jerry Warner, Ma. Hello. Well, it's, it's very funny seeing you here, Mr. Warner. Is it? Well, it's funny seeing you. Uh, I met some people today, and they spoke about you, and uh, about Lucy, too. They knew you both before the divorce. Oh, I imagine you run into dozens of people who did. They spoke very well of you, Mr. Warner. They said you were a real gentleman. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Got any gum? No. <laughs> they, uh, they talked about Lucy, too. <laughs> well, isn't it nice not to be forgotten by your old friend? You know, Lucy, as many times as I've heard your fine singing, I never realized that you uh, must have had a teacher. <laughs> they, um... Tell me he's been uh, teaching you for some time, and he's a very romantic type. Mm -hmm. This woman I was talking to told me that, uh, oh, well, no matter. What's that, Ma? Now, 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 look at this map, Lisa, about now, this new opening in the northern side of the mine. Now, Lucy. Here, now, let me show you the prospectus. Jerry, I think I ought to tell you that nobody's listening to you. Huh? Huh? Well, what do you mean? Now, what could possibly be more interesting than the Warrener mine? The Warrener divorce. The gal's name needs clearance, Parker. Oh, that's ridiculous. Is it really? Certainly, Mrs. Leeson, and so are you. Ah, what? no, no, what? Dan, uh, relax, relax. No fisticuffs, oh, I'll explain. Mrs. Leeson, our divorce was one of those tragedies you read about in the newspapers. Yes, a trusting woman and a worthless man. Lucy's above suspicion, Mrs. Leeson, always has been. She's as pure as the driven snow, as faithful as she is fair. I tell you, something wonderful went out of my life when I lost her. Yep. I know just how you feel, Mr. Warner. How do you know? How can you know how I feel to have used up the best years of a woman's life? Huh? Oh, well, folks, that's the way it goes. Excuse me, Mrs. Leeson, you're sitting on my prospectus. Oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'll be going now. Take good care of her, Dan, won't you? I'm sure you'll be happy out where the West begins. All three of you. Maybe you'll succeed, Dan, where I failed. Goodbye now. Well, Ma, are you convinced about everything? What about the music teacher? Oh, oh now, Ma. look, you two. Why don't you go back to your room and settle things for yourself? But... Hmm? And let me know how it all comes out. I'll tell you. Put a light in the window if it's yes and two if it's no. But Lucy, and if you are... can't make up your mind, just pull down the shade. <laughs> What has Armand Laval got to do with all this? Why is he coming here? Because I sent for him. You said that. I still say, why? He ruined your last happy home. He'll bust the Oklahoma deal wide open. That's just it. There isn't going to be any Oklahoma deal. Hmm? I'm not going to marry Dan Leeson. Why not? Oh, <laughs> because I'm still in love with that crazy lunatic. And there, there, there's nothing I can do about it. What's the matter with you? I'm a gibbering idiot. I'm a mad oh. woman. Oh, now, Patsy, stop this. Yeah, answer the door, will you? Oh, good evening, Mr. Laval. Good evening. Almar, come in. How are you, my dear Lucy? I got your call. Yes. Look, Almar, sit down, will you? It's about Jerry. Ah, yes, your husband. <laughs> he's a very funny man, yes? <laughs> yes, he is. But I'm convinced he still cares about me, or he wouldn't do the funny things he does. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't care much about me. No, he doesn't, No. And that's just what I'm getting at, Alma. You know that everything was all right that night. And I want you to convince him that everything was just as we said it was. Oh, I'd be glad to. Um, does he carry a gun? Oh. Now, you're not afraid of him. Oh, of course not, no. But you know husbands. <laughs> then you'll do it as soon as possible, won't you? He mustn't know that I've had anything to do with it. Oh, very well. As soon as possible? Uh, yes. Huh? Open up, Mr. Oh. Smith. Oh. Oh. It's Jerry. Oh, but this is much too soon. Oh, of course it is. Well, do something. I, I, what should I do? Well, 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 you can't stand there. I, I, Go in the other room. And, and hurry and don't come out. I don't care for this. Well, neither do I. Let, let him in, Aunt Patsy. Oh, Lord. You said it. Ah, greetings, Patsy. Oh. <laughs> hello. Well, uh, hello, Lucy. Hello. Hello. What's the matter? I, uh, nothing. Well, I, uh, I guess you two want to be alone. No, 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 Aunt Patsy. I, 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 I whip up a little omelet from the kitchen. No, Ah, uh, uh, smart girl, you Aunt Patsy. I, matter of fact, dear, I, I did want to be alone. You did? Yes. 
Look, Lucy, let's get right down to it. I've been a sap. Have you? Yes, yes. I want to apologize. I know that Chump Louvel couldn't have meant anything to you, but, well, guys like him just make me murderous. I just want to... Oh, oh, well, then. I just want to say I'm sorry for everything, oh, dear. Oh, and... Jerry. I... Oh, look, Jerry. L let's meet later, hmm? And talk it all over, shall we? Sure. Yes, that, that's wonderful. Here's your hat. Goodbye, dear. Yeah, but, but... I'll call you. Goodbye. Uh, uh, are you trying to get rid of me? Oh, no, of course not. Why should I try to get rid of you? Here's your hat. My hat? Well, that isn't my hat. Oh, no. no look, look at the thing. It comes down over my ears. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh isn't that funny? Did you, did you get a haircut, maybe? Well... Well, well, not since I came in. Now, 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 look at that thing. Doesn't that look funny to you? I mean, God, eh? Look. Yes, I know. It, it, it's just a little roomy, but maybe they're wearing them that way this year. Well, I don't think so. I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'll catch you the bell. All right. Why am I always answering doorbells? Oh, well, look, Lucy, if you've got company... No, no, it's nobody. It's just Dan Leeson, probably. Leeson? Oh. Well, I don't want him to see me here. I've caused you enough trouble. I'll just duck in the other room. No, no, no Jerry. No, 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 Lucy, no. I want you to be happy. No. I'll wait in there till they've gone. Yes, but Jerry, you... Oh. Hello, Miss Adams. Yes. Oh. It's Mr. Leeson and his mother, Lucy. Oh. Hello, Lucy. Lucy, dear, I've come to tell you something. Oh, hello. We've come to tell you, Lucy. Well, what have you come to tell me? I want to apologize for those awful things I accused you of this morning, Lucy. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, in the next room. Lucy, I, I don't want you to be angry with me for repeating what that awful woman said about your divorce. Oh, no, of course I'm not angry. What nonsense. What is that? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, but, but, oh, 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 two of the awful truth. And I assure you, a great surprise is in store for Jerry Warner in Act Three. But before the curtain goes up, there's a word or two of wisdom, I believe, for the ladies. In the very brief moment before Kerry Grant, Claudette Colbert, and Phyllis Brooks return, I would like to make this observation about our product, Lux Toilet Soap. Everyone knows that nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. And we're very proud of this fact, because it certainly is significant that such an overwhelming majority of these charming women whose very livelihood depends to such an extent upon their appearance, have come to look upon Lux Toilet Soap as such a trusted aid in the task of keeping themselves ever beautiful. But another fact, which is just as important and just as significant, is that lovely girls, young women and older women in every village and town throughout this broad land also look upon Lux Toilet Soap as a trusted aid in the very important feminine job of keeping beautiful. Screen stars must have lovely skin because they're screen stars, of course. But for another reason also. These famous beauties have close-ups to face off the screen, too. 
They know that for every woman who wants to win romance and hold it, lovely skin is important. And that's why they are really glad to be able to pass on to other women the happy experience they've had with Lux Toilet Soap. Here's what Betty Davis says. I use Lux Toilet Soap regularly, as other Hollywood screen stars do. Why don't you use this fragrant white soap? So I'm going to ask every woman in our audience if she won't go to the store tomorrow and buy at least three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap and use this fine white gentle soap with active lather faithfully. And it is my honest belief that if you do this, when the three cakes have gone, you will be just as enthusiastic over Lux Toilet Soap as the screen stars. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Grant, Claudette Colbert, and Phyllis Brooks proceed with Act Three of The Awful Truth. Two weeks have gone by, and the divorce is almost final. Determined to block Jerry's impending marriage to the society heiress, Lucy has tricked her way into his apartment. Just inside the door, she stands facing him, smiling coyly. Hello, Jerry. Well, now that you're in, what's the nature of this visit? Well, I just thought I... You know what today is, don't you? Certainly. Our divorce becomes final tonight at 12 o'clock, and tomorrow we'll both be back in circulation. That's Mm -hmm. right. I I just thought I'd drop up to wish you a lot of luck. Oh, that's very nice of you, but I'm just on my way out. Where to? Well, as you must know, I'm on my way out to a pre-engagement dinner for me and Barbara at the Fancies. Oh, Jerry, you can't. Who says so? You can't because you love me. The things you believe me guilty of couldn't cause aggravation and heartache unless you love me. Of course, I loved you. I said love, not love. Oh, you're so stubborn, Jerry. You're, you're throwing away our happiness. Barbara's a fine girl. We're getting along swell together. But that isn't necessarily happiness, Jerry. Look, you and I fight, and we disagree on every subject under the sun. But we were happy. It's no fun for me to come here practically crawling to you, Jerry. But our marriage is worth it. I'd do anything to make you understand that you and I belong together. Tomorrow will be too late, dear. Once you're free, the Vances will officially announce your engagement, and you won't be able to jilt a girl whose jilting would be news for every newspaper in the world. You'll be caught by circumstances. You'll be lost, Jerry. Oh, I'm very contentedly, too. Oh, no. You'll be miserable. Oh, you dope. Why can't you understand? I'll take it. Oh, no, you won't. I've got it. (laughs) Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Who is this, may I ask? Give me that phone. Jerry, I think it's... Hello. Just have to answer my telephone. I always said hello. Hello. Shut up. Now give it to me. Hello. Tell her to call you back. Yeah. Hello. Shut up. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. Well, it took you long enough. Have you made up your mind who the woman is? Oh, that's funny. I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh Uh-huh. So did I. Who was she? Well, it's really very simple, dear. That was my, uh, my, uh, my sister. Oh, really? Your sister. Now, how are you ever going to get out of that? I didn't. Oh, sure, sure. She just got back from Paris. Dropped in to see me, you know, and... Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I'd love to meet your sister, Jerry. Why don't you bring her along tonight? Oh, no, no. I don't think she can come over this evening. She has a previous engagement. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, naturally, dear, she's very anxious to meet you, but... Oh, yeah, tell her I'd love to meet her. Tell her to wear boxing gloves. Keep quiet. Now, look, Barbara. Look, Barbara. She said if she possibly could, she'd break her engagement and come over later. Yes, but I doubt that very much. Yes, I doubt it, too. Well, if she can, she can, of course. That's right, dear, but I'll do my best to fix it up so the two of you will meet very soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Hurry over. I will. <laughs> oh, now I'm in a fine fix. She wants to meet my sister. Well? You're a big help. Well, you know me. Anything I can do? Oh, to break it up? I see what you mean. <laughs> Well, I'm in a fine mess. No, I'm sorry, Jerry. Really, I yeah, am. Yeah, sure. But I wouldn't worry about it, dear. She trusts you, doesn't she? Of course she does. Hello? Ah! Hello? Oh! oh, I did it again. Oh, give me that thing. Oh, listen, you don't have to take that from Hello? anybody. Hello? Oh, quiet. Oh, you don't take that from anybody. Put your foot down. You're bringing your sister tonight. But, but, darling, I told you she couldn't make it. There's no oh, reason for her to call you up every five you minutes, is there? It, darling. Oh. No, 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 look, dear, there's no reason for you to call me up every five minutes, is there? Jerry! Goodbye. Well, well. (laughs) I'll keep quiet. 
Sit down, my boy. Sit down. Thanks, Mr. Vance. It's too bad your sister couldn't come tonight, Jerry. Oh, yes. Well, she was terribly sorry, Mrs. Vance. You see, she uh, she didn't weather the boat trip very well. As a matter of fact, when I left, she was calling the doctor. Uh, you can imagine my surprise when I heard a woman's voice on the phone. You can't blame me for being suspicious, Jerry, darling. Well, certainly. I, I mean, of course not. I was thinking, dear. Mother, don't you think it would be nice if I asked Jerry's sister to be a bridesmaid? Oh, lovely. Oh, well, I think she's sailing back to Paris almost immediately. She said she'd do her best to see you before she goes, though. Oh, you'd like my sister, Barbara. She's very much your type. Where did she go to school? Uh, uh, excuse me, what do you say? I said, where did she go to school? In, in, um, Switzerland. Oh. And, uh, you say your father was a Princeton man? Yes, that's right, sir. Oh. Class of 92. He tells some very funny stories about the place in those days. Yeah. He tells one in particular about a football game. Ooh. It seems Yale was playing Princeton one day. I and... beg your pardon, Mrs. Vance. Yes, Edward? Mr. Jerry's sister has arrived. What? Miss Lula Warriner. Made it, Jerry. A surprise. Oh, you maniac! What'd you say, dear? Uh, I, I, oh, I just asked how you were feeling. Well, I'm feeling fine. Oh. Mrs. Vance, may I present my sister, uh, Lola? How do you do? <laughs> How'd you do? Oh, it's lovely to know you, Mrs. Vance. Vance, my dear. Oh, sure, I forgot. Uh, Barbara, this is Lola. How do you do? How'd you do? Well, you know, it's nice getting a chance to meet you. I see your pictures in the paper, and I, I wondered what you really look like. I've uh, wondered about you, too. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, Lola. Yes, dear? Uh, this is Barbara's father, Mr. Vance. Mm. Mr. Vance, my sister. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> well. Huh? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Only I never would have known you from Jerry's description. I think you look kind of cute. Uh, won't you sit down, Miss Warner? Thank you. Say, did I interrupt something? Go right on with your story, Jerry, honey. Oh, well, I was telling a story about my, uh, about our father. Oh, you were? Well, go right ahead, dear. Thanks, thanks. You see, Mr. Vance, it was Yale's ball on Princeton's two-yard line. Oh, Mr. And, Vance, and... I, I don't want to appear rude, but I wonder if I could have a little drinky. Why, uh, why, certainly. Well, I, I had three or four before I got here, but they're beginning to wear off, and you know how that is. Oh, well, don't look at me like that, Jerry. You like a little drink yourself. <laughs> you know what we call him? We call him Jerry the Nipper. Uh, uh. <laughs> he likes to sneak him when nobody's looking. Oh, he's awful cute about it, too, yeah. I've seen him go along all evening and apparently not have a thing to drink and all of a sudden fall flat on his puss. <laughs> Edward, a glass of sherry for Miss Warren, please. What, sherry? Oh, no, I don't like sherry. Oh, Mr. Edwards, come here, will you? Yes, miss. You know what I want, don't you? About the three fingers? Yes, miss. And snap it up, will you? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jerry. What were you saying? Well, I, I was just telling them one of Father's stories. You've heard it. Oh, I have. You see, there was a minute to go. Dad had the ball and... Ball? Uh, what ball? What? The football. Well, well, what in the world was Dad doing with the football? <laughs> look, look, I was just telling a story about when Father was at Princeton. You remember that. Oh, sure. Well, because I remember. Oh, oh yeah. That. You know, Pop loved Princeton. Yeah, he was there nearly 20 years. Oh, yeah. If ever a man loved the place, he did. He, he just adored it, and, and he certainly kept it looking beautiful, too. You've seen the grounds, haven't you? The grounds? Of course. Well, uh, well, Mrs. Vance, I'm afraid that my sister has a somewhat distorted sense of humor. So have I. Uh, your drink, miss. Oh, gee, thanks. Oh, what she really meant to say was... Mm, uh, that... Oh, gosh, was that good. <gasps> Woo, it's so thirsty. It must have been that ham I had for dinner. Now, listen, you... Where do you get your liquor, Mr. Vance? It isn't too personal. Uh, it's imported from Paris. You don't say all the way? Oh, gee, well, that's pretty good stuff, though. Yeah, if I ever get managed to get to Paris, I I'm going to look up the guy who sold it to you. If you ever get to Paris, didn't you just come back from there? Who, me? <laughs> oh, I only wish I had. Oh, I guess that's just one of Jerry's stories again. You know, when Jerry and I were kids, we were the worst liars in the neighborhood. We always used to pretend we had rich relatives who were going to leave us money. <laughs> Oh, I guess it was harmless enough, though. Everybody knew we were just sort of kidding ourselves. Are you sure everybody knew? Well, sure. Who'd be dope enough to look at Jerry and me and think we had money or a family? <laughs> oh, but you have to give Jerry credit. You look at him. We're proud of him, you know. He's worked himself up from nothing to this. What do you mean by this, Miss Warner? Well, now, you look at me. I'm different. Now, it isn't money that counts with me, your position in life. No, sir. No, it's art. All the time I was working at the Virginia Club, I you thought that I... You worked at the Virginia Club? Sure. Didn't Jerry tell you? No, he didn't. You're a singer, Miss Warren. That's what I do. I sing. Well, uh, perhaps you'd sing for no, us no, now. No, no, I'd have some other time. You see, my Oh, sister... now, that's the trouble with you, Jerry. You've tried to keep me in the background all your life. 
Why, of course I'll sing for you. Sure I will. Do you own a piano? Mm -hmm. Right there. Well, thanks. Now, you see when... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Don't anybody leave this room. I've lost my purse. Good well, gracious. There's your purse, Miss Warner, on the chair. Oh, well, am I relieved. Oh, Mr. Edwards. Uh, yes, miss? Well, you kind of keep an eye on my purse, you know, right here. Thanks. Lola, uh, I think we'd better go now. It's getting late. Oh, no, now, not before I sing, Jerry. <clears throat> oh, gosh, who does your tuning? I'm sure I don't know. Well, maybe it's just the piano. Uh, what are you going to sing? <laughs> oh, it's a surprise, Mrs. Ed. But the first time I sang this number, oh, I killed him. You know, there was a fellow there, I, I think he was a critic. He said my voice had a, let me see, what was it? Oh, yeah, uh, elfin charm. Uh, a je ne sais quoi, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, quiet, please. Barbara, I'm afraid. I... Quiet, Mrs. I got an invitation from Mrs. Hutton. I'm all dressed up, don't care for stop nothing. It, stop I it, stop it. Come on, get up. You're going on of here. Stop it. No, I won't stop. All my life, you've got to keep me in the background. I said I'll stop, stop it. stop now. Oh, oh, my finger. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm on hand. Good night, Mr. Vance. 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 Good night, Mr.
there anything wrong, folks? Now, listen, Frank, you're a witness. See, the divorce is on. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly 30 seconds before 12 o'clock, we called off the divorce. Remember that and swear to it. You betcha. All right, now, uh, 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 get out. You oh. betcha. Oh, Jerry. Ah, <sighs> oh, Lucy. Oh, Jerry, listen. 12 o'clock. Wedding bell, darling. Every second that passes, I love you twice as much. Say it, darling. I love you, Lucy. I love you, Jerry. I love you, Lucy. I love you, too. With, with peace restored in the Warner family, Terry Grant and Claudette Colbert are returning now to our microphone. In fact, the whole family is here, with the exception of Mr. Smith, the dog. What happened to him? Well, I suppose he lived happily ever after, too. Oh, I envy those dogs. No troubles, no worries. No worries? <laughs> you don't know my dog. He worries more than I do. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I bet he's home worrying about this program right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, C.P., who does he worry about next week? What play are you going to have? Next Monday night, we're going to have Barbara Stanwyck, Brian Ahern, and Ida Lupino. And the play is Wuthering Heights. One of the strangest love stories ever told, and certainly one of the most gripping. Barbara Stanwyck, Brian Ahern, and Ida Lupino. Say, that sounds great to me. I don't think your dog will have to worry about that show, TV. No. You know, my dog's a critic, too. Every once in a while, he chews up one of my favorite hats. Oh, chews up women's hats, huh? Well, I think he'd get his slant on that. But every dog to his taste. You know, I was in a picture once with a dog that weighed 23 pounds when we started shooting, and a week later, he was up to 30 pounds. <laughs> what was he eating, scenery? Oh, no, sir. The director was eating that. <laughs> he had to wait for the mutt to reduce. Oh, now, Gary. What, what made the poor dog so fat? Ice cream? Oh, every time he did a trick right, he got an ice cream cone, and that dog never missed. <laughs> that, was killing him with, that was killing him with kindness. <laughs> Couldn't you, couldn't you find a better way of rewarding him? Well, when we were shooting The Awful Truth, Mr. Smith's trainer used a mouse, a rubber mouse named Oslo that squeaked. If Mr. Smith performed well in a scene, he could play with Oslo. Worked fine, too, until he spotted a still camera on a set with one of those rubber bulbs dangling alongside. <laughs> Mr. Smith thought it was the mouse, I suppose. Oh, it squeaked just as well. But you know, after that dog took his first picture, he wanted a dark room put right in his doghouse. A very tall tail, Mr. Well, Grant. Well, it was a tall doghouse, Claudette. Yeah. Really, he could have managed it. Now, Carrie, just relax. <laughs> but before I go, I, I want to say something about the product behind this program. I've used Lux Soap now for a good many years, and from my own experience, I can recommend it wholeheartedly. Good night, C.B. Good night, Terry. Hello. Good night. <laughs> and thanks for teaching an old dog fancy with a new trick. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night in the Lux Radio Theater... Present Barbara Stanwyck, Brian Ahern, and Ida Lupino in Wuthering Heights. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> This is Melville Roy, asking you to be sure to listen to the Lux daytime radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. This human and gripping story of a young, attractive woman doctor is brought to you every afternoon, Monday through Friday. For the time and station, see your newspaper. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Heard in tonight's play were Lou Merrill as Dan Leeson, Gail Gordon as Frank, Inez Seabury as Aunt Patsy, Ralph Sedan as Armand Louvat, John P. as Judge, Verna Felton as Mrs. Leeson, Forrest Taylor as a lawyer, Mary McDonald as Dixie Bell Lee, Ted Bliss as Joe, Lee Millar as Edwards, Molly Joe Duncan as Gladys, Annalisa as Celeste, and Ross Forrester as Hank. Claudette Colbert has just completed the picture Drums Along the Mohawk for 20th Century Fox. Cary Grant appears through courtesy of Columbia Pictures and Harry Cohn and will soon be seen in His Girl Friday. His current picture is the RKO production In Name Only. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox where he directed music for The Range Came. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>